Welcome to Fuzzy Tech, the show where I talk about technical, geeky, nerdy stuff. I'm Fuzzy, and in this episode, I'm going to be creating an antenna and trying to pull images from satellites. Yes, the ones in space. There are many satellites up there, over 5,000 in fact. Some of them work, some of them don't. With my setup, I should be able to pick up at least three of them. This is my first time trying this and I'm not completely convinced by my antenna building methods. So I don't expect anything amazing. But let's give it a go and see what happens. To begin with, I needed some parts. A software defined radio, which is basically a modified digital TV and radio tuner that can pick up a wider range of frequencies. In the case of this one, it can pick up radio waves from 24 megahertz to about 1.75 gigahertz. I also needed an antenna. I'm building this one myself a V dipole, using a guide specifically for the weather satellites at 137 megahertz. A link to the guide is in the description. I found it difficult to source metal for the elements, so I used some solid copper wire from an old electrical cable that I twisted together to give it more of a surface area. I also tried using some copper brake line that was donated for the project, but it was too big to be able to secure properly. And I also tried unbending some metal coat hangers, but that was very tedious and didn't really work properly either. I seem to have a way of making it work from things I've cobbled together from the rubbish, like the crafty raccoon that I am. I also used a chock block and 10 meters of RG6 coax cable. To connect it to my device, I'll use this box and some banana plug connectors I already had lying around. This will enable me to have a length of coax with plugs on the end. I can plug into the antenna when needed, and if I make future antennas, I'll make them in the same way so I can just use the same connecting cable. It may not be the best way of doing it, but it's all I have for now. In fact, the whole project can pretty much be summed up by that one sentence. I chopped out a bit of plastic waste pipe and screwed in the chop block in such a way that it was guaranteed to stab me in the fingers. I then chopped the electric wire to the right length, which is 53.4 centimeters from the end up until the start of the coax under the chop block and twisted it together using a drill. Then I screwed it in the chop block with them at a 120 degree angle. Once it was built, I needed some software to test it out with. As I was using my laptop with Linux Mint, I installed GQRX, NOAA APT, and GPredict. Although I ended up using Look for Sat for Android instead of GPredict. After setting up the software, I placed my antenna on the balcony and fed the cable through the vent holes in the balcony door. Then I just had to wait for the satellite to be in the right place Cross my fingers I could pick something up from its transmission. Well, something happened at least. Running the recorded sound through APT, I was a bit disappointed to find the recorded signal wasn't strong enough to pick up any sort of recognisable image of the Earth. So I waited an hour and tried again with another NOAA satellite. Long story short, Exactly the same thing happened. After some research, I thought it must be the way my antenna is positioned. It was upright with the elements sort of sticking out the window. I figured they needed to be more outside than that. So I laid them out flat and laid the mast horizontal with the elements sticking out the window and propped it up with some pillows that were on the balcony already. Apologies for the blurry photo it was minus 15 outside and I wanted to get back in quickly before I froze and before the satellite came overhead. This time the signal came out much better. Not all of the time, but some of the time. Here's an example of what I heard while capturing the broadcast. After running the sound through the NOAA APT software, it decoded the broadcast and returned me this image. To say I was very excited was an understatement. I know it's not perfect, but it showed me I was on the right track at least, and it's something that with a bit of perseverance, I reckon I could get better images. In fact, I had another go the next day and got a much better picture. As and when I get better results, 
I'll be posting them on the Fuzzy Tech Instagram at Fuzzy Tech Show. So if you're interested in all that and all other things Fuzzy Tech, go give it a follow. Link is in the description. So that's it for this episode. I hope I've sparked an interest in software defined radio, satellites, space, or just tech in general. If you like what you see, please give it a like. If you don't, please tell me why. If you have any comments and feedback, leave it down below. Consider subscribing and pressing the bell. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.